Welcome to Agent After Hours. I am here with John Clark. Finally. Hey. It's been a while, so we tried putting this together about a year ago, and uh, uh, <laughs> shit happens. I don't know. What I, what happened? What did I do? You didn't do anything. Oh. It was I sent out an end. It did not matter. Oh, but, uh, I suck. No, man. I wanted to bring you on because a lot of agents claim to be the number one on social media, and you are that guy in Dayton, Ohio. Well, yeah, it's a bold claim, I guess. <laughs> um, it's funny. I've, when I've said that before, there's a... I won't say his name, but there's a particular gentleman from from a different <laughs> brokerage that who told you that blah blah blah, you know. And, and I and I understand completely, and people can say whatever they want. So I'll tell you how it was prompted. If you want to know, that's yeah. part of a story that not a lot of people know. Uh, and it it's actually a funny enough is because of my brokerage. Uh, so back uh, when I first started, 2018, that first January, 2019. Uh, there was a panel done, and Nikki Gulick was there, and yeah. my boy Albie Stasick, and obviously Andrew Gadosh, Mike Wall, uh, Castro, Austin Castro, mm-hmm. all these guys that I know do good stuff. And then there was a young lady named Lacey Nunley that I'd never heard of at the time. Yeah. Uh, and but she's with EXP, so we love her anyway. Wouldn't have matter regardless. But I was I saw this Property Spark article. Right, and Property Spark is another marketing company, just like Home Snap and everybody else sure. when they throw out those awards. And uh, my thing is, I'm just not big on fluff, uh, and so I I went there and checked out the panel only to see who this person was and see what's going on. And then I found out it was because of this article. Yeah. And so then I took the article and I literally went home and I did a spreadsheet, and I checked every single one of the agents in the top ten in the state. And went to every one of their social media profiles, and then I put their following on each one. And in the top ten, didn't even have come close to just my LinkedIn profile. Right. So at that point, and 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 when you look, there's a there was Nard did something a while back, did a a, a research uh, study about which ones give us the most ROI on social media. Sure. And Facebook number one without question. Uh, number two is LinkedIn. Funny enough, because eighty five. Oh, excuse me. Uh, majority of people make. Roughly average on seventy five thousand dollars a year, so it's nice to work with, B2B with, and, with yeah. money. Uh, and then it's Instagram and so on from there. But Instagram is surrounded by people who pay for their followers. That's what I was getting and to. And <laughs> funny enough, the the people that keep winning this uh, they pay for the award, followers. they pay for their followers. Sure. For a fact, this particular number one did, uh, and it's not to crap on anybody. It's just. I talked to the person that told her how to do it, right? Uh, because I because I found out, you know, she used to work for him. So either way, I just at that point I don't do non organic. All mine's organic because I don't care what the following is necessarily. Uh, I just figured after I, I did the math and saw all that, I was like, Something. man, everybody else is full. I mean, Property Spark only has six thousand followers on LinkedIn. So <laughs> dude, who the hell's gonna listen? I don't listen to any. When I get an agent that even hits me up for an offer or something. I immediately go to LinkedIn. If I don't see them there, I already know I'm going to take them for a ride. No, what's hilarious, Abby, that you met. Um, she's been with us here for two years, but she, I was like, hey, hop on this webinar. It's a social media expert. And she starts researching them in the middle of this webinar. And she's like, they're not real. They bought their followers. No. So she asks in the middle of the webinar, did you buy your followers? <laughs> And I get a call from the person running the webinar within like 10 minutes of ending it. And she was so pissed that they, she would call her out like that. And I'm like, don't be mad if it's something that you did. Affirmative. Yeah. So Affirmative. it's like, just be authentic. And that's what I love about you. And the reason I wanted to have you on is because you do the pattern interruption and you send out birthday videos that are authentic as hell. It is you, you talk a mile a minute. I don't know how you talk so fast. Well, well I can, I'll tell you. It's, believe me, I'm not that good. I, I'm gonna <laughs> put it all out there right now. Uh, the the video is anywhere from 15 takes to 150 takes. Holy shit. And if I get closer to that latter number, I am verbally assassinating myself, <laughs> saying the, calling myself the worst names in the book. I mean, and it sounds like I have Tourette's, uh, and it's horrible, and so funny enough, that birthday video, I started in 2019 and I did it every single day, sick or not, or I made it up if I got was sick yeah. or on vacation, all the way up until literally yesterday. No uh, kidding. Last year, yesterday. Okay. La- last year, yesterday. Because I moved from a condo to Yankee Trace. And my, well, my, my uh, basement is where my office was, yeah. two floors away from my wife and child, who I like to keep. Yes. Right now, my office is directly across from the master. I will lose my wife. 
for sure, because these are done at 4.30 in the morning. I was going to say, I know you're an yeah. early guy. There's nobody that can, I mean, I can't. So I had to stop for them, but my basement is is almost finished. Okay. It's almost been turned into a, a nice office for myself now because it was unfinished completely. Uh, and so pretty soon I'll be right back at it. I was hoping I'd hit it right on a year, which today is literally a year for the day we moved in. But- you are a man of many talents. Real estate, you're crushing it. Dayton Sorry. home, Dayton home. Used to be boys, right? Now it's team. Yeah, well, so yeah, when I first left the Love Ohio Living team yep. with Mike Wall and them, I started with my buddy Shane yeah. Drake, who's from Kelly Williams. Uh, he came over to us with the Dayton Home Boys, and we, you know, we're both old school hip hop guys. We both we actually worked at Don Pablo's together back in the day. We're both <laughs> old, old hustlers. We just thought it was a cool idea, and honestly, it, and it is for the flipping homes and stuff. But when you want to be taken really seriously, you can't. Got to switch you it up. Can't, a bit. Yeah, I don't want people to think they got to be jumped in to be on my team. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I don't want old people. You know, people scared of us. To, you know, we're rocking. I'm rocking a hat backwards and stuff. And I just took it from just do the birthday videos to like out in public. And I'm like, this is dumb. So oh, I catch shit for wearing shorts and flat bill hats. So. Yeah, I'm, well, and that's my thing. You know, so, uh, well, and, and and I stopped doing the. Uh, we we switched over to Dayton Home Team, right? Because. He, as we both kind of had the same idea, and then he he's more in Lebanon area anyway, so he's kind of concentrating on Shane Southern. Drake Real Estate, yeah. which full support of. And then, uh, funny enough, I just uh, dissolved the team actually uh, this past week. All right, because my network is a lot bigger now, yeah. uh, and so this 10x thing that you see me wearing all yep. the time—that's a network that I've been working on for four years, and so. It's way bigger than Dayton, Dayton Ohio. Hunting. So I'm changing the marketing around to make it easier too. So then when my people in Cincinnati or someone else want to stick a sign and it doesn't say Dayton home team, you know, it 10X. says 10 X EXP. Or Got it. So yeah, we're, we're making the switch slowly, but surely, but no. Oh. So you do that, you crush it in real estate. You send out birthday messages, did yep. get back working, into it. Working to- you flip bikes. Yeah, that one. Because I, I texted you about re- my old red line. Yep. You had one and you posted it. I was like, oh man. And then now you got some Yeezys on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is all, this is because of my child. Uh, and I just decided at the beginning of this year now uh, that every time I close a deal, I'm going to buy a pair of shoes. So I've it. got a nice little collection going on since January. It's, it's pretty dope. I mean, it's pretty cool because I honestly didn't come up with a lot. Uh, when I was a kid, we didn't have a whole lot, so I never asked for anything. Yeah. So when I got stuff, I really, really took care. I'm still the I'm weird. I'm still the same way. Like, I'm kind of cheap, uh, or if I can if I can do it myself, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, and and so the shoe thing was something like. My brother used to save all his money to buy stuff that was like had a name on it to rock with people and stuff like that, and I just didn't care honestly too much at that point. Not that he was different. It's just. He hung around with some other kids, and it was just a little different vibe, I think. And I've always just taken that with me. I always felt like even if I have – like I, I do pretty good right now, and I still feel like I'm broke. Like I, I feel, <laughs> still feel like I can always spend the money like that on my wife and kids. Sure. Like I'll buy her something really cool. I'll buy him something really do- – like he's the guy that had all the shoes. <laughs> You're doing all this stuff. You're managing a huge social media account. You create memes in another account, uh, which have more followers than anything I've seen. Uh, do, how do you have time for it all? I get up really early. I, well, he gets me. I don't set an alarm. He gets me up like 3.50 to 4, 10, 4.15 every day. Uh, I used to, a couple years back, that was happening. And I wasn't, I mean, it was like maybe right shortly after. It was like 2019, right, when I started doing all this nutty social media jazz. <laughs> I, I get up at 4, and when I was doing the birthday video, uh, I didn't have as much time to do it, so I was making these things throughout the day. But now I get up, and now since that video has just been put back for a little bit until this thing's done, I'll knock out, I'll make 10 to 12 memes every morning, uh, video ones now, more real type ones. And and listen, my the funny thing is, like I've got people, like there's people like the broke agent, there's Daniel Diaz, a rapping realtor, there's uh, a bunch of good people that are out there uh, and then funny enough, all of them have a problem with me because I've taken some of their <laughs> and repurposed it repurposed. Well, cause my thing is I'm a weirdo about aesthetics, man. I hate ugly ass memes. I hate, I hate when they have bad language, you know, or not, I mean, not bad language, uh, horrible language. Like, like 
yeah, agents be doing this, you know, or something like that, like stupid shit. I'm like, I, that's that's not going on my, right. so I'll make it better. And then I put it out again. And you I've had people like, yo, don't put, you stole my stuff. I'm like, dude, really? I stole your, you made the movie that you slapped that over top of. You had a great idea, but it just looked like shit. So I just redid it. I flipped your meme, basically. <laughs> I, is what I, I took what you did and made it better. I made it better. That's And I tell him that. And so Broke Agent one time hit me up actually on TikTok. He's like, can you stop posting my stuff? And I wasn't, it wasn't repurposing. I was just posting it. And I'm getting more love than he is on his, on TikTok. Uh, yeah. Everywhere else, he's kicking the shit out of me. Believe me, he's been he's the first guy that started doing it. Oh, they have started like they are the bar stool of they snatch, real estate. Well, they snatch up every new comic that comes out. Like Daniel Diaz was four thousand, five thousand people when I started following, started sharing his shit to everybody mm -hmm. on TikTok. And then he, not that I started, not that I blew, but he's like fifteen overnight. And then it was like, and now he's four hundred twenty something. And that, because he just signed on with them, gotcha. as soon as he signed, so I just had a. Uh, the art, I follow a company called The Clothes. Have you ever yeah. heard of that? The oh, Clothes. Yeah. They have all kinds of really great. Newsletters great. Great yeah. value add stuff mm -hmm. on there. And they bring different links for podcasts and stuff. And they had one the other day. And I, I don't, I, I go through them sometimes. I'm like, oh, whatever. And I click. And this one said, memes you absolutely have to have in your life. And I clicked on it. And I'm going through it. I'm like, oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. That's mine. Holy shit. Three, my, three of mine are on there. from, And it goes to my TikTok account. I was wondering why I went from like, 1900 like 5,000 people overnight and I'm like holy shnikes what's going on so I just switched that one that used to be my personal to just the memes just the funny real estate yeah. memes and now it's now they're all going nuts of course and getting all kinds of fun comments all right so you get up before dawn <laughs> what's daily schedule look like for you well, most of my morning before everybody gets up, I'm going through all of my uh, CRM. I'm knocking out emails, sending messages, uh, or you know, kind of getting stuff set up. Um, and then I also schedule some posts here sure. and there because of you know, I algorithm. Make, I make it look well. I also make it look like I'm on there all day long when I'm actually out working and doing real job. Now people think that you know <laughs> that's all he does. That's fine. Can can keep thinking that shit. That's I'm gonna take your next <laughs> listing. Then I promise I'm not. I just, I, if you're not on there, you're going to, your business will be hurting very soon. If sure. You're not. And, uh, you know, I just try to stay present. Dude, I'm 50 years old, brother. There is no way in hell I should even be remotely close <laughs> to somebody that can even claim this title, or if you want to call it, that I have. You go to sleep? 9 a.m., 9 p.m. religiously. All Between, right. Well, 9 is when I start to go into a coma. Ten is, by 10, I'm done. Got it. Uh, yeah, I have to get somewhere. I made that happen because I, I used to be the other guy that stayed up way too late. Uh, but My sleep was weird last night. Man, I went to bed probably like 10 yeah. and woke up at like 1.30 and I was up till 5. <laughs> Nothing worse than waking up 19 times throughout the day. No. Too. That happens nonstop. What uh, advice for an agent... Looking to break through on social media. What are you telling them? You want me to tell you what I've told everybody for the last four years? Somebody needs to do this. Somebody recently that I just helped from the person I told yeah. you, wasn't a huge fan, um, started doing this, but I haven't seen it yet on a regular basis. It was regular for a few days, and it's kind of what everybody else has done so far. Somebody out there needs to get up every single morning, get on the... Dayton Realtors, you know, look look in the MLS and look at statistics for the day. Tell us what happened the day before or, or the week before. Say, listen, last week we, or yesterday, we listed 47 homes and we sold 55. If you think the interest rate is bugging everybody, obviously it's not. People are out shopping right now. Sellers, if you need somebody, holla at your boy. And you know, if, if it's buyer, you're not represented, feel free to give me a call. I'd love to show you what's out there. You know what you're doing when you do that? You're doing two things. One, you're telling the general public that you know what the hell's going on in the yeah. market and you're reminding them every single day that you'd be more than happy to help. That's one thing. Two, you got people like me or you that actually work that you're doing something for me that's making me real strong that day when I go out with my buyer and they're like, ah, you know what? I, I'm like, listen, this hits the three bedroom, one bath in Riverside you wanted for under 180. I mean, listen, we listed 47 homes in Dayton yesterday and 56 of them sold, like, right. or 56 sold. This shit ain't happening. Like, we have a shortage in homes. You sure oh, you yeah. don't want to pull the trigger now? Press hard. Second copy's yours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it no, just you makes you stronger when you know numbers like that. And if they're coming straight off there daily, 
I'm going to follow you so I can continue to get this valuable information. Other people are going to follow you because you're probably the person that seems the most intelligent in the market because unfortunately, and I don't mean this to be as derogatory as it might sound, <laughs> but there's only about 75% of, oh, 75 of the people in this particular market are probably soccer moms and, and weekend warriors. They're people that thought it was going to be easy, mom and dad, and everybody was going to buy from them, and, 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 or this is a great, oh, we've already si seen an great side hustle. Yeah. There's no such thing as a side hustle in this business, in my opinion, unless you did it for 30 years and you decide you just want to sell on the side because you got a big ass group of people calling you. Right. But other than that, no, this is a regular job that, you know, if you're quitting this, work. if you're quitting this, if you're quitting a nine to five weekends off gig to do real estate, so you you're ready to work 50 to dude, 60, you're, you're hitting like, <laughs> you're a hanging life. That's the joke. It's yeah. I, I quit my nine to five so I can work 50 to yeah, 60 exactly, hours a week, exactly. if not more. Oh, well. uh, but no, I, you're exactly right. Um, I, the content, and I'm a huge proponent right now, agents need to be putting more stuff on YouTube. Yeah, it's evergreen content. That's what you're supposed. That's one of the best ones ever. Has always been. Oh my gosh, it's the number two search engine. Always, Google. it's always going to be good. YouTube's huge. It's evergreen content. Incorporate it into your drip campaigns. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that we really re redid this past year with my team. Was hey, we need to have everything that we preach to clients on a regular basis needs to be a video. Affirmative. Yeah, that's so, whatever. Because nobody wants to read the crap anymore. No. They, want, they want instant gratification. No, shit. I remember when Rebar Camp came to date and oh. we helped bring it here. And I did a thing on blogging and I was like, who here likes to read? Huh. Or who here likes to write? And I said, good news, nobody likes to read. So, yep, yep. Same thing. My boy Larry uh, Larry was here. Um, was it the last one? The Rebar Camp that you're talking about? Was it yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Larry Lee from yep. Vantage. It's, uh, funny enough, him and I followed each other before I became a real estate agent. No kidding. And then we have since we, then we finally connected there. I was like, yeah, what up, man? It's been cool. So, yeah, it's good people. So um, that's one thing I was saying is, is something that would probably put somebody on the map pretty quick. And yeah. it's and it's not like you got to make it up. I mean, you're not, you're, you're reading, you're fast. spitting facts. Yeah. So just say, Hey, good morning. I'm so-and-so Somebody with so-and-so. You. you know, this morning I looked at the, looked at statistics this morning and it looks like we sold this many yesterday, sold this many, blah, blah, blah. And then just give me your thing. Yes. you got to be that quick. That's 30 it. seconds. You don't that. even have to be live to start with. You can record and mm. then put it on, yeah. but just do something and it's a value add. But if you, here's the thing. If you consistently do it, it will work. If you do it for a few days and quit, it will not work. That birthday video thing, it, it, it was real cheesy. People laugh at me, call me an auctioneer. They always wonder how fast I can talk uh, until I finally tell them I am not even close to being that good. It's just from a ton of screwing up and keeping doing it until it's finally done. And then when I feel like it's finally okay and I'm my own biggest critic, uh, I throw it out. And the really cool thing is now when I go to dinner with my wife and stuff like that, and we go places for the last two, three years, dude, people come up to me. Kids walk up to me. Guys, walk, the last guy I walked up with me is brewery, man. I thought he wanted, I thought I owed him money. He, he looked at me as I and me and shit. I was like, I was like, dude, what's going on? And he's like, man, are you that dude that rocks the hat backwards and go talks really fast and birthday videos or something like that on LinkedIn? And I'm like, whenever they say LinkedIn, I like it so much more than Facebook or anything. Don't sure. get me wrong. I love everybody that anybody that would check in and follow me. But when it's LinkedIn, it's pretty impressive. And I and a guy four o'clock in the morning two days ago said the same thing. Man, he goes, he knows Gaydosh too, which really big fan of yeah, him. Yeah. He's my good friend of mine. And uh, and he's like, he goes, yeah, I think Gaydosh sold my house out in Lake Lock or my my sister in law's place in Lake Lock. Uh, well, I guess, hey, by the way, and he's a, he look, you know, he's a fit dude, look well, really well dressed, and he was like. Hey man, by the way, I love the way you market yourself on LinkedIn, man. It's different than everybody else, and I just dig it. And I'm like, dude, coolest compliment in the world. Like, Ooh, <laughs> that was cool. I mean, like, I didn't try to ask him for business, anything like that, man. That, oh, you that, know, he's calling you. Yeah, no, well, it, or he or might Gators. call Gatosh. Yeah. I don't, you know, it wouldn't even matter. But, but it was just a he the fact it. that he recognized it and said, I like that it's different than everyone else. Right. That was the cool thing. Like, I mean, they're like, you know, we're sitting here at G's and. Mom, is that that guy? Is that that guy? And I'm like, oh my God, no way. And it's, it's, it's poor Love man Jesus. famous. It's poor man. It's like dating famous, you know? Like, <laughs> But it's cute. It's funny. And it's when it's around my wife, I really like it. It's really, she thinks it's cheesy, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. <clears throat> but uh, if you want to, all, all people, uh, new agents yeah. and older agents who are stuck on, you know, what to do, not doing anything, yeah. literally, I think what, what's probably worked for me the best is the fact that I'm consistent, but I talk about, if you want to break it into percentages, probably about 25% of my stuff is motivating stuff. 25% of my stuff is about my family, my wife, my kid, my dog, 
friends, family, stuff like Shoes, that. Shoes, bikes. Shit like that. Yeah, personal stuff. So you know who I am. You yeah. Because your vibe attracts your tribe, dude. I only want the people who are hip to this and they can handle this shit and kind of find it interesting. <laughs> if you think I'm a dick and you're just like, you know, <coughs> whatever, you don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to weed out everybody. And that's another thing. You could be very deliberate about your social media and change everything. That's what I've done is every time I do that birthday video, that birthday video is the second thing I'm doing. First thing I'm doing is looking at where, who you are, where you're from, and I'm trying to figure out what our connection is. So I don't care. If you're in my market, I've got a good chance of possibly recruiting you just because you're in my market. I, sure. mean, I mean, not a good chance. I'm saying you. I'll more than likely – talk to you before I'll talk to the guy in Cleveland from Remax. Right. I don't need him. Sure. Unless he's some badass, crazy dude that does some weird shit like me that I'm like, I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I want to steal his shit. No, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, but, but you know, something, or I find something cool about him, then maybe, but I don't really find that too often in outside of my brokerage. And it's not on purpose. I'm sure there's some gangster people out there. My entire network is almost EXP. I mean, I, if my phone, I've got a million everybody else, agents around here that I've worked with. Um, but I only, I just gave a referral outside of EXP two days ago to a Keller Williams guy because he's my home. He's a dude who graduated with me in at Hondros and he's the man and he geographically lived really close to where my client was. And I was going to be gone for three days and I don't want to struggle. And sure as shit, when I was gone that weekend, put it under contract. I'm like, Client's happy, you're happy. Dude, happy. that's the thing. And my, and my loan, I was like, man, I'm, I'm a bit mad that you didn't get the... No. Uh, no, absolutely not. Because if I would not have been there, we'd have zero. And and my client's like, dude, and it made me look like a pimp, dude. I'm like, he is the... <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a husband who has PTSD. And one of the issues is when change happens, it's a big deal. Yeah. So to do that, to make that change with... And I said, listen, man, this cat, this is an old, he's a soldier, by the way, or previous soldier. I'm like... Uh, I was like, he's one of my favorite people in the whole world. And geographically, he lives where you keep on trying to find a home. I'm like, he can jump on it in two minutes. I'm like, dude, if you pass it through Congress with him and let's see what's up. And then I got back and Monday I got the news. I'm like, dude, uh, you know? Hell yeah. All right, man. <laughs> Any last minute words of wisdom? I'll just don't try to do what I do. Do what you do, but just do it consistently. Give... Like I said, oh, I don't even think I finished that last part. Just do your do a little bit about you, a little bit about your business, but don't make it all about that because the people the the people that you want around you that are going to work you know love and trust you and yeah. all that are people who dig what you're doing. So if you're into bikes, I do that. If you're into boats, no, I love that you said hit those your, hit those people. Find your tribe, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like hit your if you're if you're a, a extreme sports person or something, you know, or that, what are the hell, CrossFit stuff. Uh, obviously, I don't do that shit. I run around in the shower to get wet. But, you know, if, if, do go that route. Try to try to hit that that sphere. That's the easiest way to do it. I mean, honestly, that's what Nikki Gulick did. Yeah. She getting out, networked like a champ, and <laughs> blew up. You know what I mean? So, anyway, thank you for having me, Dude, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks so much you, for man. joining. Sorry if I was blue all over the place. No, that was fantastic.